Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming one of my favorite videos to film. I love filming Will I Buy videos and I feel so bad because I feel like I've definitely fallen behind because there's a million things that launch literally this week. But I figure you guys probably still want to hear my opinion on some of these things and maybe some of you don't, that's totally fine. Whatever reason made you click on this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If not, I hope you have a great day. And let's get into this new video. Okay guys, I literally have so much to talk about and right before I started filming this, I did check out Trend Mood and it looks like ColourPop is coming out with a spring collection. Now it's called Pretty Fly and the packaging has like a beautiful butterfly on it. It looks absolutely stunning. I'm so excited. I really am hoping it's like a bigger eyeshadow palette, but you know what? I'm not gonna get my hopes up, but I'm sure we'll find out like next week because come on, ColourPop loves to launch things on like the weekly basis, so I'm not complaining. I love it, so you guys can hate all you want, but I'm a happy camper over here. Okay, so Makeup Forever came out with these Ultra HD Underpaint Color Correcting Palettes. And they have a few different shades, which is nice because they included many different skin tones, which makes me very, very happy. I remember seeing these on the Sephora page, and they looked pretty cool. I am personally not in the market for any kind of concealers right now. I'm actually working on three in my current project, Panning, and I just need to finish up some concealers, and I have so many ColourPop ones that I've bought, so I'm really, really good. But these look really fun and I like that you can color correct and maybe even do some contouring with this pack. And yeah, it looks really nice and they came out with multiple colors. So if you guys are looking for a good cream concealer highlight situation, I think that might work out really well for you guys. Now, another thing that piqued my interest, you guys know I'm not a big fan of Dose of Colors but they are coming out with matte cream eyeliners and they're coming out with 10 shades. Now the thing that really drew me in are some of the shades that they've teased you with, like this one called Hit the Road. It's like a beautiful ox blood color, like I feel like that would make a gorgeous eyeliner. So I'm not usually a huge fan of gel eyeliners, but that particular product from Dose of Colors has really piqued my interest. You guys need to know this about my channel. There are a few brands I just generally don't like to talk about. I feel like the more I talk about it, it's like more unnecessary like attention drawn to it. But there is some real foolery going around these days. And Tarte is coming out with a whole mermaid collection. So it started off with that mermaid, Be a Mermaid palette that they recently came out with. I think that came out this past week. And like everyone was going crazy for the Tarte freaking clam palette. Like it was, I just don't understand because sometimes it's literally grown ass women. And I'm not going to lie, I bought the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself Unicorn Collection, and I actually have the brush set. I actually bought two brush sets because I was like, oh my god, it's such a good deal. And then I thought get rid of it. It was really lame of me to do that. I should have never bought two sets of the same brush kit, but I was in it. Like, I was drinking the Kool Aid, and now I'm just like not drinking the Kool Aid anymore. And I just look at this and I'm like, I don't know if like these women in the ads, like the models of this makeup, actually wear makeup like this because I don't know what grown ass like woman. I'm not saying don't go crazy with your makeup, that's totally fine, but this packaging to me is just so unappealing. So I don't know, I just, uh, Tarte just rubs me the wrong way. I just, it's just a whole shit storm, so. Okay guys, here is something I'm really excited for. This is an indie brand I've had my eye on for a while. It's called Give Me Glow Cosmetics, and they have this palette called the Staple Palette. Well, it came out last year, and I was gonna buy it, and I kept like going back and forth, back and forth, but it was a little bit more of a spendier palette. It was like a $50 palette, and I decided ultimately not to get it. Then when I finally made up my mind, the palette was sold out, and I just kind of forgot about it. Well, now they're talking about it relaunching, so they're actually restocking it next Friday, the 16th, and I've just been watching them, like, swatch this palette on their Instagram, and I'm just, like, over here salivating, so I have a feeling I'm gonna end up buying that palette because it's just, like, an everyday neutral palette, but I don't know, I feel like the formula is gonna be really good. And you guys know I've been dying to try as many indie brands as I possibly can this year. So they are on my list. 
This other one, I don't know how new this palette is. The only reason I want it, kind of, is because my friend Paulina's Beauty had bought this palette and now I'm like, ooh, I kind of want it. Palette by Blush Tribe and it's an all matte, really, really colorful palette. I don't know exactly what this palette is called, but it looks super pretty. Now, I've decided to wait on purchasing that one because I have the Viseart Bright Editorial Palette and then I also just picked up that one by the brand Certify, which looks exactly like this palette by Blush Tribe. So I'm just gonna wait, but it looks really, really cool. I'm all about the colorful matte eyeshadows these days. Now another launch that actually has me excited, and these are already out, but I'm not gonna buy anything because I don't need another liquid lipstick, but Juvia's Place came out with liquid lipsticks and they're beautiful. I love these shades. I feel like they would look amazing on darker skin tones, which just makes me happy when I see other brands like catering for dark skin tones. I feel like if you have a lighter skin tone, you could still wear some of these shades. They're definitely very wearable. I love that they did a matte and a shimmer. I think that's really cool. And these aren't very pricey, so I just love Juvia's. I think they are constantly pushing themselves and... It's really, really cool to see. Jouer is coming out with some new lip glosses. I get that lip gloss is super trendy right now, but I just don't get the multiple colors. Like, here is my 30 shades of lip gloss. I just, I feel like lip gloss is, maybe you need like one or two kind of deal. I feel like you really just need a nice staple sparkly nude and maybe like a nice glossy finish nude. But when it comes to those colorful lip glosses, I feel like they're so messy. Especially if you live in like a windy city, you know, your hair gets stuck in your lip gloss and it's just like such a nightmare. So I'm a little confused about who's still buying bright red lip gloss and stuff like that. I personally really like the brand Jouer. They are a online brand and I think they're sold at Nordstrom. And I like a lot of the stuff they make, but I haven't been buying from them recently because I feel like they're one of those brands that have kind of just like got their like foot in the door and now they're just kind of doing like the same thing, you know, releasing the same products. They're not really being very innovative, so I'm not really into them right now. Here is something that got me so, so excited. It is the Smashbox Face Primer Sprays. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love, I don't like a lot of things from Smashbox. Actually, I can't tell you any products that I like from Smashbox except this primer water. And now they came out with scented ones and I'm so like dying to buy them. But I kind of want to wait until they come to like an Ulta or Sephora so I can smell them. They came out with three scents. There's uh, Centering Citrus, Serene Greens, and Social Coconut. You guys know I love citrus, I love coconut, so I really want both of those. But they're so pricey. The Smashbox Primer Waters retail for $32. And I just bought a full size of the plain one. So I really can't justify buying more unless I get a good deal. So maybe I'll buy it during the VIB sale or something like that. So ColourPop came out with a new product. This is the Superstar Loose Pigments. They're $5 a piece and they came out with 12 shades. I think these colors look really beautiful. Now personally, I'm not a fan of loose pigments, so I won't be purchasing any of these, but let me know if you guys picked up any of them. I think it was an interesting like thing for them to add to their line. That's my thing with ColourPop. I think they come out with a lot of products and people love to bitch about them, but it's like you don't have to buy every single product. ColourPop comes out with on a weekly basis. You can say no, like it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's not gonna kill you. <laughs> You'll be fine. Now another product that is launching that I am also excited about is the new Sunday Riley, the Influencer Longwear Foundation. It says it's a skin focused foundation that perfects your skin with longwear, lightweight satin matte finish, buildable medium to full coverage, conceals redness, large pores, and dark spots without settling into any lines. It controls oil but never dehydrates the skin for fresh looking, shine free, healthy glow for all skin types. 20 shades, $42 each and 1.08 ounces. Now, Sunday Riley is one of my favorite skincare brands. I love all their face oils. They're sitting back there and I'm really curious to try the foundation. This sounds like a great like everyday type of foundation. So you best believe mama's gonna try and get her hands on them. Okay, I did not get a chance to talk about these new Vizier palettes. Well, they're out already, but they came out with two. There's one called the Absinthe palette, and, and then there was one called Siren. 
and they're both so boring like I just don't get it I uh I I thought maybe I'd like the green one but here's the thing I love busy art matte palettes I just don't like the shimmer palettes and I'm really worried about where busy art is going because they're constantly launching new products now they are still a relatively small brand I feel like but it freaks me out because they're so well known for their quality and their pro makeup and all of that stuff. I really wish they would kind of stay in that pro makeup realm because they deliver such good quality. But yeah, I just, these mini palettes are just not for me. I have four of their 12 pan palettes, the all matte palettes. Those are honestly amazing. If my whole collection were to go away, I would be most sad about losing my Vizier palettes because they are really really good okay now glossier is coming out with the lid star glisten eye glows and they came out on oscar night and i feel like this is great because they're kind of hitting that you know trend right now with the liquid eyeshadows am i gonna run out and purchase these no because glossier again is an online brand so you can't actually swatch this stuff anywhere and i'm so satisfied with these liquid fairy lights by pixie right now it does look like they have some really cool shades though, so let me know if you guys are picking those up. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. Cover Effects just came out with a new foundation. It's called the Power Play. So according to the description, it says it's a high-performance, long-wearing, modern matte foundation. Power Play is the fourth foundation from Cover Effects to be developed in a global range of 40 shades and different undertones. Designed for women on the go, it delivers true color, all-day wear, and powerful shine control as well as environmental protection $44 now I was really tempted because I do really like the cover FX brand but I feel like I can never get my shade right I have their custom FX drops and I wear the shade G70 I believe so I feel like I'd be the same shade in this foundation but honestly I have so many foundations right now I'm kind of on a low-key foundation no buy because I want to try and use up some of this makeup I have. So yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna pass on the foundation for now. In case you guys were dying to know my thoughts. Now you guys know I am not a fan of Benefit Cosmetics. And they are coming out with a blush called Gold Rush. And it is a warm golden nectar sparkle shimmery gold finish. And it will be available sometime in March. Now you guys... Has Benefit done a trip about Gold Rush yet? Because they'll probably go to a place that has like a hotel made out of gold. And they'll serve everyone gold drinks. And they'll have a gold party and a gold cake. And then a girl dressed in gold is going to jump out of the cake and present this one blush that Benefit has created. And we'll all be like completely underwhelmed, right? I don't even know how they're going to qualify this as a blush. And even if it is a blush, I can only really see it working as a blush on really 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 pale people and that's fine like if you're pale and you want to go buy this blush that's great but I'm just so over benefit as a brand of not excluding people of color it's I'm just I'm just gonna stop right there and move on with my life oh here's another brand that I'm pissed off at for not including people of color Mr. Mark Jacobs is coming out with his summer collection and they're doing an eyeshadow palette, which is beautiful. But the one thing everyone wants from that collection is his coconut bronzer. And I already know, just looking at that damn bronzer, that it is not going to work for my skin tone or anyone darker than me. And that really freaking pisses me off because he has foundations for people darker than me and my skin tone. Why can't he make a few different shades of bronzer? Like... Why? Why do I have to sit out and watch everyone else get a yummy, beautiful smelling coconut white packaging bronzer? I think it's so unfair. So if any of you are watching this and any of you care, please help me boycott Marc Jacobs and this damn bronzer because all I've seen on YouTube is beauty gurus on there going like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to buy the bronzer. And it's like, you know what? You guys all shot on Tarte Cosmetics when they came out with their regular shade range for the Tarte Shape Tape. All of you bandwagoners got on the bandwagon and like shit on Tarte, but nobody wants to call out Marc Jacobs for not making more than one bronzer. Like, why? Why? Even freaking Bomb came out with three colors. At least they tried. Like, 
They might have failed, but at least they freaking tried. I just can't with Marc Jacobs. It just pisses me off. Kristen Dominique's brand is going to come to Ulta Cosmetics. I feel like at this point they're going to have to make Ulta's like five stories tall because, I mean, they have to fit all of this makeup in there. They're like picking up every brand they can possibly get their hands on. I still want to buy from Kristen Dominique. Again, she's just not like one of my favorite influencers. I feel no like draw to her, but in case any of you guys cared her... Makeup is going to be sold at Ulta soon. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't heard many people talking about these, and I, I'm not really sure if I talked about them in a previous Will I Buy It, but the Hourglass Graphic Eyeshadow Palettes. There are a few different shades, and I must say, I do love Hourglass. They make a lot of beautiful things. But these eyeshadow palettes are so basic. I mean, when I stare at them, it like almost puts me to sleep. So you guys will have to let me know if you've tried the Hourglass eyeshadow formula and how you like it because personally I just, it looks like a snooze vest. So there's that. Okay guys, so this I was really excited for and I already purchased one of the shades from the new Kat Von D shades that she launched on her website. This is the shade Milagro that I'm wearing on my lips but she came out with 10 New liquid lipsticks. I am obsessed with Kat Von D's liquid lipsticks and she came out with so many cool colors. Honestly, if I could pull off like this blue blooded or Plan 9, I would honestly go ahead and buy them. But her liquid lipsticks are like 20 bucks, so I'm not going to go ahead and buy colors that I know I'm not going to wear. But I thought this color was kind of fun and I thought it would be a fun color for spring and even fall this year. LC Cosmetics announced that the Minimalist Palette is gonna have a sister. Oh my gosh, nobody cares. So I actually tried LC Cosmetics last year. It was on my list of brands to try, I think. And I was so freaking excited to get the Minimalist palette. It was hella expensive. And when I finally got my hands on it, I was beyond disappointed. I actually ended up selling it on my Poshmark. Thank you to the wonderful person that took it out of my hands. I didn't really think anything exceptional of the minimalist formula or anything like that so I was happy to get it out of my collection and I will never purchase anything from LC Cosmetics again to be very honest. Okay guys the next thing I want to talk about is this new palette that Violet Voss launched this week. It is called the Like a Boss palette and I am so confused because I swear Like a Boss looks just like the Laura Lee palette, like the green in here, Smashly, looks exactly like one of the greens in the Laura Lee palette. So I don't know why anyone that has this palette would go ahead and buy the Like a Boss palette. I used to be so hooked on Violet Voss. I was drinking all of the Kool-Aid that Violet Voss was providing me with. And then I realized at one point that all of their palettes were just starting to look the same and I get it like when you're focused on eyeshadows there's only so many palettes you can come out with and I feel like they've peaked and now they're just to me they're just they were up here and now they're slowly descending because it's like I don't need all the shades that they are coming out with I did like the hashtag palette I thought they had something good there but again they always throw in these like boring neutrally oranges and reds and it's like that's in every single one of your palettes like why don't you throw in some blues like the hashtag palette with some purples and blues and like some really burnt like bright orange shades would have been so beautiful and so different I just hate that they do like 50 shades of yellow and orange and red and then they throw in a few pops of color and they're like oh my god this is the like a boss palette buy it if you want to be a boss and it's like no, I'm good. I'm gonna not be a boss and not buy your palette. Oh my god, guys, you didn't think that Natasha Denono was coming out with a palette and I wasn't about to talk about it, right? So she came out with the Tropic palette for $129. Not gonna lie, when I first saw it, I was like, whew, I kinda wanna buy it. I kinda wanna play with it. I know I'm gonna hate it and then I'm gonna end up roasting it and then my subscribers are gonna be like, Karen, you're such an idiot because you constantly buy Natasha didn't own a palette, so they never work out for you, and then you're sitting here complaining about them, and we all have to listen. So I fought the urge, you guys, even though it was very, very tempting. I didn't buy the Tropic palette, 
and I'm glad I didn't because I've heard like a few Instagram accounts I follow. Nobody's very impressed with it so far, so I'm like, dodge that bullet, you know what I mean? So happy not to have purchased that this time around. So this palette they announced or like launched right after I finished filming my last Will I Buy video. So let's really quick talk about the Lime Crime Venus Excel palette. Now, this is a $56 palette that includes a mirror, matte, and matte sparkles, and glow, and metallic eyeshadow formula. So this is a very beautiful palette to me. The artwork is gorgeous. It really draws you in. But does this not look like every other palette we've seen this year, and especially in 2017? It reminds me of the Modern Renaissance palette. It reminds me of the Huda Beauty palette. Um, this new palette I just picked up from Pinky Rose. I just... I just don't know why people keep making these palettes. They're over now. It's over now. And honestly, if I didn't have any of those other palettes, I would maybe consider this. But since I do, I'm not going to buy this palette. I was so, so tempted to get it because, again, I am a review channel. And so I feel like the pressure constantly to buy new eyeshadow palettes. But you guys, I have so many palettes. I literally have a drawer of palettes just the need to get tested and reviewed. So I'm trying my best not to buy makeup in March. I've thought of a few things and kind of allocated that that's what I'm going to get for the month of March. And I'm trying not to buy any extras beyond that, but oh, it's tough. But anyway, yeah, the Venus palette, I, I think it's a great idea, but I bought the Venus one on Hope Look when it was on Holt Look a long time ago and I was not very impressed with the formula so I ended up returning it and I don't know it's just one of those brands I'm like mm. but I know there's a lot of people that really love it so let me know your thoughts on the Venus Excel palette okay guys that is everything for this will I bite video I hope you enjoyed it let me know your questions comments thoughts in the boxes down below you guys know I love reading your comments I love talking to you guys Usually I upload at 7 a.m. so I do have time to respond to you guys. So definitely, definitely let's talk in the comments. Let me know what other new launches you'd like me to feature in a Will I Bite video in the future. Just tag me on Instagram or send me an email or whatever you want to do. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for spending time with me. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys.